I'm John here at the MKE Production Rental Test Bench, and we are going over a new combination of hardware, the Fujinon 18 55 with the SLR Magic Anamorphot 65 with Cinema Gear, and the PD Movie Focus Motors and Focus Control System. This is the first budget anamorphic zoom ever. The reason we have all this hardware together is focusing on anamorphic has been really hard up until now. Every budget anamorphic setup is gonna have some combination of your taking lens, what we call a spherical lens, classic, round, everything looks normal, and you're gonna have the anamorphic block or the anamorphic adapter that is gonna have some sort of squeeze. This particular one has a 1.3x squeeze. It's gonna be 1.33 times skinnier than it is tall, gonna take in a little more light from the sides. So if I take my taking lens and set it to 50 millimeters, my focal length in the vertical is 50 millimeters, and my focal length in the horizontal is about 37 or so millimeters across. That gives you real cool opportunities for bokeh, real cool opportunities for controlling depth of field in a new way, and it's gonna make your footage look different than anything taken on a spherical lens. These pieces are interoperable with the rest of your kit. The 18 55 from Fuji, for example, incredibly useful as a lens on its own. The Anamorphot adapter can be paired with other lenses, including the new APO Hyper Primes from SLR Magic. And the focus control motor can also be used as a zoom controller or even iris controller for this Fuji lens and any other lens you might have. One of the things that's unique about the Fujinon MK series lenses, they are parfocal, meaning you set your back focus and then you are in focus no matter how zoomed in you are and the lens doesn't change length. That is a perfect combination to pair with an anamorphic adapter. The only hang up would have been the dual focus. So on an anamorphic setup, when you have this anamorphic block here and you have your taking lens here, both of them have to be focused to the same distance separately. Now we've gotten around that before by putting a variable diopter on the front front. By combining it with the PD Movie motorized controller, we can run both focus motors on one touch. You can see we can go from infinity on both lenses to four feet. Now, is it perfect? No, it's not gonna track through the middle. It's not gonna look, at least your witness marks aren't gonna be quite exactly right gonna be off a little bit, but in my experience so far, it is close enough. This gives me an opportunity to shoot at 55 millimeters and then widen out to 32 and not have to worry about changing a lens. It's a simple snap of the wrist and I don't have to drop time. When I've tried to use an anamorphic adapter like this 2X50 adapter from SLR Magic, they're heavy on the flare. A system like this is a lot less flare, which I prefer. There is one other big advantage to this over any other setup I've tried so far. We can actually use a matte box. Huge difference that SLR Magic has made by making the front of the adapter, it's non-rotating, it's non-telescoping, the focus gear is pulled back off the front. Everything stays exactly the same. It's a 112 millimeter thread. If you had a 112 millimeter filter sitting around, you could pop it right on there. More realistically, you're gonna have a clamp-on matte box at 114 millimeter, or since you're probably using rails anyway, you can use a rails matte box, use your graduated filters, use things you could never use on a budget with anamorphic before. I should talk a little bit about the downsides of this setup. I do wish that Fuji's lens either went a little longer on the wide or went a little wider on the long. It sucks that there's that break in the middle. So we've got this 18 to 55 and we can use like the second half of that zoom range or there's the 50 to 135 and we can use the first up to about 105 on that zoom range. It'd be great to not have to change lenses at all. That's probably a pipe dream. Another limitation of this setup is, as it is configured now, there's no full frame coverage. So if you're on an A7 series camera, you're gonna need to work in crop mode. We are seeing a trend toward VistaVision, full frame, really large sensors. It'll be interesting to see how the SLR Magic adapter works with full frame lenses. Another downside of this setup, the complexity of it. It's not too hard to set up, but there are more things that can go wrong. So we got this powered on a DTAP right now. If you have to run power to it, it's another thing that can break, right? Well, I haven't seen any problems with reliability in this and in my testing, I'd expect to have more problems than if I had a front anamorphic zoom that was built front to back simply for anamorphic. 